All right. So picture this. The power just went out. The fridge is silent. The Wi-Fi is dead. And my phone? 2% battery left. This is it. The moment we all fear. The end of civilization as we know it. Or maybe not. Because today I'm testing this $600 battery to see if it can actually help me survive a blackout. Can it keep my food from spoiling? Power my workshop? Or most importantly, can I still make toast? Let's find out. All right, no more talking. Let's get this thing running and see what it can really do. All right, first things first, let's start small. No point in trying to power my whole house if it can't even charge a phone, right? We're testing the basics heat, light, and, of course, keeping my TikTok addiction alive. First, let's try the space heater. It pulls 900 watts, which means I can get about 50 minutes of heat before the battery taps out. Not bad for short bursts, but this definitely won't heat an entire room for long. If you're thinking of using this to stay warm all night, better grab some blankets instead. Now, something way more important keeping my phone alive. The phone pulls 7 watts, meaning I can charge it continuously for 30 hours on a full battery. That's a lot of emergency TikTok scrolling. Next, I plugged in this LED lamp. The power station didn't even register its 2 watts draw, but my what meter confirms it's using power. That means I could keep this thing on for days without killing the battery. Perfect for long-term blackouts. Okay, so we know this battery can keep my phone charged, my lights on, and even warm me up a little. But what about the important stuff? Yup. If the power's out, I still gotta eat. So, let's see if this battery can keep my food fresh. And more importantly, get me some breakfast. Alright, here's a big one, the fridge. The last thing I need is my groceries going bad. This thing pulls 140 watts, which means I can keep my food fresh for about 4 hours before the battery runs out. If you're dealing with a long outage, the key survival tip is... Do not open the fridge unless absolutely necessary. Otherwise, you'll be on a speed run to finish everything before it warms up. Now, alright, so the fridge is covered, but what about frozen food? If my fridge only lasts a few hours, I'm guessing the freezer might be an even bigger problem. Let's find out. This one's not great. It pulls 800 watts, which means I'll only get less than an hour before the battery gives up. So what's the plan? Simple. Eat all the ice cream first. You know, for survival reasons. Emergency preparedness is all about making the right choices. The good news? I can still have breakfast. Can I still make coffee and toast in a power outage? Let's see what this battery can do. Both the toaster and kettle pull 800 watts each. So I can make coffee and toast for about 40 minutes total before I'm out of juice. That's actually pretty solid because, let's be honest, no morning should start without coffee and toast, even if I'm in a full-blown power outage. But here's the real test. What if I don't want just toast? What if I need to heat up actual food? Time to see if the microwave stands a chance. This could go two ways either I get a hot meal or my battery pack waves the white flag. Bad news. 1200 watts is too much. The battery immediately shut off like it just gave up on life. But here's the hack if I lower the power setting. The microwave actually works. It takes a little longer, but I can still warm up leftovers. Not the fastest solution. But hey, I'm still eating. All right, we've tested kitchen appliances, and even a space heater that barely lasted an hour. But let's be real what's the actual priority during a blackout. Work. Entertainment? Both. Let's see if this thing can keep me connected, or at least let me binge watch until the power comes back. First up, the laptop. Because let's be honest, the power going out doesn't mean your boss suddenly stops expecting you to send that report. Good news. This thing pulls 50 to 60 watts, meaning I could run my laptop for 10 plus hours before the BLUTTI dies. That's enough time to finish work, write a novel, or... 
let's be real, just binge watch Netflix. I mean, why suffer in the dark when I could rewatch an entire season of my favorite show instead? Emergency preparedness is all about priorities. Now, let's see if I can still watch movies during the apocalypse. This TV pulls 154 watts, meaning I can watch for around 4 hours before the battery runs out. That's enough for a couple of movies, a full game session, or even a news cycle so I can pretend I'm staying informed. So yes, if the world is ending, at least I can watch it in high definition. Survival level upgraded. Okay, keeping food fresh and making coffee is great. But what about getting actual work done? If the power's out, can I still keep my tools running? Because let's be real no juice in the tools means no progress. And a dead drill might as well be a paperweight. So let's see if the battery can save the day. Or if I'm about to have the most unproductive blackout ever. Come on. Don't let me down. Let's start with something simple charging my cordless tool batteries. This is actually super important if you're working off-grid or during a power outage. These tool batteries typically take 100 to 150 watts while charging, which means the battery can recharge them several times before it runs out of juice. That's a game changer if you're in the middle of a job and the power cuts out. After about half an hour, I've already got a 50% charge on one of these. That's really solid. It means I can keep cycling through batteries and continue working for hours even without grid power. All right, time for the real test. Can this thing actually run power tools? First up, the drill. No issues here. It's pulling about 350 watts while running, which means I could use this for about an hour straight for the battery drains. That's actually a lot of runtime if you're just drilling holes or assembling something. Now let's test something a bit more power hungry and electric planer. This thing needs consistent power to shave off material. And so far it's running smooth. Just like the drill, it's pulling about 350 to 400 watts, meaning I'll get around an hour of use. That's plenty of time for quick repairs or DIY projects during an outage. So far, so good. Ported power tools like drills and planers work great with this battery. But what about something bigger? All right, time for the big question, can this battery run a shop vacuum? Because let's be honest, sawdust is going everywhere. And nope, that was instant overload. The shop vac pulls over 1,200 watts, and this battery is capped at 1,000 watts output. So no cleanup for me guess, I'm stuck with a broom. Now let's test something even more demanding a circular saw. These things can spike above 1,500 watts. So I have a feeling this won't work, but let's try. Yeah, no surprise here. Too much power draw. The battery just can't handle it. So if you need to run big power tools, you'll either need a bigger power station or your back to hand tools. Good thing I have a hand saw for backup. Back to old school woodworking. All right, I've been draining this thing with all these tests, but what if I could recharge it without ever plugging it into the wall? Because let's be honest, if the power's out for a while, I need a way to keep this running. And what's better than free power from the sun? Let's put this to the test and see if solar charging can actually keep me powered up. Now let's test solar charging, because what's better than free power from the sun? This is one of the biggest reasons people buy power stations like this. We're pulling in 200 watts of solar energy, which means I could fully charge this in about 4.5 hours under ideal sunlight. That's actually really solid. Positioning really matters with solar panels. If you adjust them to face the sun directly, you'll get way more efficiency. If it's cloudy though, expect much slower charging times. After just 30 minutes, I've already added about 20% charge to the battery. That's huge if you're off-grid. Compared to plugging it into the wall, which takes 1.5 hours to fully charge, solar is slower, but it's 100% free and renewable. If you're in a long-term blackout or camping, 
This could be a lifesaver. So, does solar charging work? Absolutely. And if you live in a sunny area, this means endless power, as long as you're patient. All right, so after running all these tests, let's break it down. Is this battery actually worth $600? Pros. What this battery does well. Great for small appliances and tools. This thing handles fridges, lights, phone chargers, laptops, and even some power tools like drills and planers. If you need a reliable power source for small essentials, it's rock solid. Keeps phone and laptop running for hours. If you're working from home during an outage or just need to stay connected, this will keep your laptop running for 10 plus hours and charge a phone for days. Solar charging is a game changer. The fact that I can recharge this using just sunlight makes it an incredible off-grid power option. If you're camping, traveling, or living off-grid, this could save you from running out of juice. Portable and easy to use. At under 22 pounds, I can easily carry it anywhere, no gas, no fumes, no maintenance. Plug it in, press a button, and you've got power. No messing with fuel or noise like a gas generator. Fast AC charging, 0 to 80% in just 45 minutes. And let's not forget this thing charges from the wall super fast. Zero to 80% in just 45 minutes? That's faster than some smartphones. So even if the power comes back briefly, you can top it up and be ready for the next outage. Cons, what this battery can't do. Can't handle high wattage devices like shop vacs and saws. If you were hoping to run a shop vac, table saw, or any high powered tool, forget it. The 1,000 watts limit means heavy-duty work is out of the question. Limited runtime for heavy appliances. Running a fridge? For hours. Running a freezer? Less than an hour. Running a heater? 50 minutes. This battery isn't designed to power big appliances for long. It's great for short-term emergencies, but if the power's out all day, you'll need solar panels or another backup plan. Solar charging depends on weather. Solar is amazing, but if you're in cloudy weather or winter, expect much slower charging times. This means in bad conditions, it might take 6 plus hours to charge instead of 2.5. So, is this thing a complete power solution? No. But is it one of the best emergency backups for $600? Absolutely. If you need to keep essentials running, charge your devices, power small tools, and have an off-grid solution, this is a fantastic option. But if you're trying to power your whole house, run heavy-duty tools, or keep a freezer going for days, you'll need something bigger. What do you think? Would you trust this battery in a blackout? And what's the first thing you'd power if the lights went out? Let me know in the comments.